Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to change the dimension of our previously created array in our previous video from two-dimensional array to a three-dimensional array. So I'm going to change the reference of my array and then I'm also going to give it a third dimension. So what we are basically doing is we are putting the array that we, the two-dimensional array that we created in a previous video and placing that into the index of our third dimensional array. So we'll have a 3D array with a, the dimensions that the user specifies. So in this example, it's three dimension, um, a three dimensional array with three indexes. And each index, we can have a another 2D array. So that's the idea. And we are going to create this in our program now. So in addition to the number of rows, I also need to have a third uh, index for the first dimension, which is the number of sides. So now I've got number of sides, number of rows, and number of columns. So the idea is we we have three, um, in this example, we have three sides. So in the first side, I have my first 2D array. In the second index of our 3D array, I've got my second 2D array. And on the third index, I've got my third 2D array. So it's a 2D array inside an array, making it this, making this a 3D array. Okay, so in addition to getting the number of rows, I also need to get the number of sides. I'm going to change the message from enter the number of rows to enter the number of sides and assign that value to the number of sides variable. And now I can create my 3D array of those three dimensions. Okay, so what we have now is assuming that the user puts in the value 3 for the number of sides and 4 for the number of rows and 3 for the number of columns, then what we have is a three-dimensional array of three sides. Um, each side has got four rows and three columns. Okay, all right. So next what we want to do is we want to loop through the we need an outer loop for our third or first first uh, dimension of the number of rows. So what I need to do is copy this outer loop and change that local variable to side counter and make it stop when this is equal to the number of sides that were entered by the user. Now what I can do is cut all of this and place it in here and change this to my 3D reference and put side counter in. Sorry, I put it in the wrong place. Okay. So that's what I need to do to get these values saved into each index of my 3D array. So what we are doing is we are looping through Side, through each side. So what I can also do is have a message for the user. So here I can indicate that we are at which side. So I can say um, values for side and I can even mention which side we are at. Okay, I don't need that. And I could also print out some line of dashes. So just a couple of dashes to separate each side. Okay, so that's what we have. Then what we do here is we are grabbing the input from the user. And the same thing goes is for displaying our 3D array. I'm going to need my outer loop as well. So I'm going to place that in here okay and then what I need to do is cut all of that and place it inside my outer loop for the side counter dimension okay I may want to print to the user also indicating which side so that it makes more sense for them so I could say side and side counter, and I could even 
mention or sorry wrong key and I'll have another one over here so that we can make it look better okay now everything here remains pretty much the same I do need to change the reference since now our reference of the array is called 3d array 3d and I also need my dimension as well my additional dimension that we created okay and I think pretty much this shall work we need to test our program so I'm going to run my program and I'm going to put in these values so for the number of sides um, just to be consistent I'm doing three three and for the rows I'm doing four and for the columns I'm also doing three so enter values for the first side so my first value is 10.1 and my second value is 10.2 and my third value is so that's for row one now we are at row two and I'm going to be entering those values so let me just put that here so I can see everything and for the second row I'm putting those values so in the first column of my second row I'm putting 10.4 and my second column 10.5 and my third column I'm putting 10.6 now we move to the third row and we are still in the first side so we are pretty much here now okay so I'm just going to put in the numbers 10.7 10.8 and 10.9 and for the last row 11.0 11.2 Oh, that should have been 11.1. Okay, and 11.3 and 4. So that's what we have there. It should be 11.1, sorry. Yeah, and 11.2, just so we are consistent. Okay, so now we have moved to the second side of our 3D array. And I'm going to be putting those values. So 20.1. 20.2 and 20.3 and for the second row 20.4 20.5 and 20.6 and for the third row 20.7 20.8 and 20.9 and for the last row of our second side 21 and 21.1 21.2 and now we are in the last third side which is this part of the array and what we are going to do is enter those values so the, for the first row it's 30 point 30.1 30.2 30.3 and for the second row 30.4 30.5 and 30.6 then 30.7 30.8 and 30.9 then 31 31.1 31.2 okay now we get a display of our 3d array inside zero we are getting the values so that's what we are being we've we've got we are now printing those values and for the second side we are printing the 2d array and for the three, third side, we are printing that 2D array. So this is a 2D array. So this is 1D, 2D, and 3D. And that's what it kind of looks like. And that's about it. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching.